Let's have a look at question five in this video. So we have a non-discriminating monopolist that faces the following demand curve. Now in the first question, uh, let's suppose that he maximizes profit by setting price at seven. What's gonna be the marginal cost and what's gonna be the profit? Now first, tip, first thing to keep in mind here that matters is that the monopolist is non-discriminating, meaning that the criteria for him to maximize profit is going to be that marginal revenue equals to marginal cost. And we will see that when the monopolist is discriminating, when he knows exactly how much consumers are willing to pay, he's going to adopt a different strategy. But we'll, we'll, we'll look at the difference in the next video. So for now, let's work with this one. Uh, so the price is given at 7. and We have the price function. We can find out something from there. Since the price is given as 7 and this is the price function depending on the quantity, well if we do some math and we substitute the price over here, that's going to be 7 equals to 8 minus the quantity, meaning that the quantity that maximizes the monopolist's profit is going to be equal to 1. So the monopolist says, sells 1 unit on the market. What we also know is that he uses this property, marginal revenue equals to marginal cost. So to find out the marginal revenue, to find out the marginal cost, that's part of the question, we must know the marginal revenue. Now we also know that the marginal revenue has the following property, is the same as the demand function, but it has twice the slope. So it's going to be 8 minus 2 times the quantity. Now since this is the marginal revenue, and we just calculated that the quantity is equal to 1 in equilibrium for the monopolist, it means that the marginal revenue is going to be 8 minus 2 times 1, so that's equal to 6. And we also said that the marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost, so that's going to be the marginal cost for the monopolist. Now, the second question is how much profit does the firm make if the fixed cost is equal to 3? Now, assuming that there's a fixed cost and a marginal cost, we can treat the marginal cost the same as the variable cost, because what is the fixed cost? The fixed is the fixed cost is the fixed investment that we are making, and then additionally we have one additional unit, sorry, ad besides that we have additional cost per unit. The additional cost is the marginal cost, in other words, the variable cost per unit. So we will have a, mar a variable cost of 6 per unit, 6 times the quantity. That's going to be the variable cost. Now what's going to be the profit? So to find the profit we must know the difference between total revenue and total costs. So let's do it over here below. The profit is going to be the total rev the difference between total revenue and total cost. Now what is the total revenue? The total revenue is going to be the price times the quantity. So let me make some more space over here. The profit is going to be the price times the quantity for the total revenue minus the total cost is going to be the fixed cost plus 6 which is the marginal cost times every unit that he sells. Okay, let's substitute the values and see what we get because we have all the necessary values. The profit is going to be the price of 7, so 7 times the quantity that he sells, which is 1 times 1 minus the fixed cost, which is 3 given in the question, plus 6 times the quantity that he sells is 1. So if you work out the math over here, we would have the difference between 7 and 3 plus 6 is 9, so 7 minus 9, and that's equal to minus 2. So what we can see, we have a negative profit. And let's just work on this profit a bit to see if it makes sense for the firm to stay in the market. We know that there's this property of entering the market that it's worth staying as long as the price recovers the average variable cost. So as long as the price is above the average variable cost, we are making some profit by selling the units in terms of the markup above the variable cost. And this will give us enough money so that later on we can also cover the fixed cost. And later on, while we are enough in the market, long enough in the market, we will have positive profits. So if this property holds, then the, although we have negative profits in the short run, it's worth being there in the market and recovering the losses in the long run. So for that, we need to know what's going to be the average variable cost. And recall that we said, since we have the average cost in the function in the cost function, this is going to be the average variable cost in the cost function. The, the, I'm sorry, this is the variable cost in our cost function and we need the average variable cost. Well, that's going to be just the variable cost divided by the quantity that we're selling. So it's just going to be 6q divided by q. So that's equal to 6q divided by q. The quantities cancel out the quantities cancel out. So the variable cost, the average variable cost is equal to 6. 
the average variable cost is equal to 6 and the price is equal to 7. And if we plot them one next to each other, 7 and 6, what we see is that indeed the price covers the average variable cost. So it's worth for the monopolies to stay in the market and then recover losses and make positive profit in the long run. Let's leave it like that with this video. In the next one, we'll keep solving when the monopolist is actually discriminating.